The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. Hi, this is Mia Mohsen Zia, also known as Mia No Time for Love. Check out my latest book, Missing, available in print and ebook formats on Amazon. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and the MikeWagnerShow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international war ring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews in Eve 11 endorsed by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and Manales. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Zia. Available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 30 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, and Apple Music. Coming soon to Podbean, Buzzsprout, Pandu, and TuneIn. And Heard Worldwide, Geo 7, Radio Public, Himalaya, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast for T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pills, hoodies, and more. Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Molsonzia for great books like Missing, Once, and Wrinkles. Also, T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, and more. Even phone cases makes great gifts 24-7. Amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia. Check it out today. Also support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, and the Mike Widener Show.com. And don't be afraid to buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Widener Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with a terrific lady who was born in Puerto Rico and raised in New York City and later went to Massachusetts. And she's currently in Florida. We'll talk about her journey. She grew up in a family in a difficult situation. She's the author of site blogs and um, writes all about her family and experiences and more and how she managed to um, overcome the situations. She is also an advocate of preventing child abuse. And her goal is to improve other people's lives and be seen as a good model through her writing. And she's got books out called Villains for Justice. Life Growing Up, Child Abuse, Samson and Delilah, also I Am Beast, Cryptic Pregnancy, also Cryptic Minds, What Do You See, and also When Monsters Attack and More. We'll also be talking about one of the books she's got coming up as well. Live, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen from the Plus Studios in beautiful downtown Orlando, the amazingly multi-talented author of The Return of the Villains for Justice and Villains for Justice, ladies and gentlemen, the very talented author, Marta Nader. Marta, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Mike, I'm very excited to be in your show. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on board, and I'm waiting to uh, talk to you as well. So, so, so you've got a really good story. You're born in Puerto Rico. You're raised in New York City, and you traveled in quite a few states. We'll talk about that. You grew up in a family uh, in difficult situation. You're the author of site blogs. You're an advocate of preventing child abuse, and your main goal is to improve others' lives and be seen as a good model through your writing. Also, you've got some books called Villains for Justice, Life Growing Up, Samson, Delilah, and more. And before getting to all that, uh, Marta, tell us how you first got started. Well, it actually all started back in my early teen years. Like, for example, whenever I was punished and I have to stay in my room, I would always sit down and write. And for some reason that I can't fully explain, Mike, it would make me feel happy. It would change my mood and it would make my day. 
And there was something about writing that it relieved. It relieved me. It brought me a lot of joy. And every time that I was either bored, unhappy, or punished, that's when I would write. And I would, like, make up stories to write about. But back then, it was mostly about romance that I was going to write about, which was odd because I was a teen, and I didn't know much about romance. And I, I just remember um, that when I was done writing, I would crumble what I wrote about and I would toss it in the garbage. But my mother, she would always find out what I would write about. And she would think the worst of me, like she thought that I was in love or something like that, you know? So since I didn't, I didn't want to stop writing, what I would do is I would break into pieces what I write about, toss it in the garbage. But that night did not stop my mom. And she would tape it all back together just to find out what I was writing about. And the funny thing is that I would always write in English. So it wasn't like she could understand what I read about. <laughs> but my mom, she was clever. She was smart. She would use, you know, she would use one of my other siblings, you know, so they can translate it to her. And, you know, she, she didn't like me to write. She actually thought at first that there was something wrong with me. There was even a time that she even thought that I had a double personality. And, you know, I don't know why, but, you know, everybody writes. It's, it's fun. So, I don't know. That was just mom. So, she, it's like she couldn't grab the idea that writing made me happy. So, in order to make her happy and not think the worst of me, I stopped writing. But when I had reached my adulthood, that's when I restarted writing again and continue to do so to this day. And I love it. Huh. Even when you're punished, you're at your best writing. Usually people are at their worst. I mean, that's just a really rare trait and very interesting. I seem to like that, believe it or not. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. My mom, she, I don't know. She was different, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was that one precise moment that simply influenced you into what you're doing for the rest of your career? Um, what influenced me, you asked me? The one precise moment, yes. Well, what influenced me really was an author called Kelly Randis. I don't know if you've heard her, um, know about her. She was Bill Milk, which was actually her first novel. And what I most liked about the book is that it was based on a true story, where it is. Hmm. And the book is about a battered young girl who tries her best um, anonymously to reach out to protected child services to inform them of the abuse that's going on in her, in her home. But instead of them helping her, they put her in even more danger, which leads her to battle against a broken child system who only pursues to keep her father the abuse at home, which is just crazy. So feeling inspired by others and wanting to be safe and wanting some justice, she takes the risk of losing her, um, the support of her whole family, which is what's sad. And let me tell you, Mike, this book is just another sample of what abuse children go through when the child system fails um, to help them, out, help them out. And just like many others, I know all about that because I've been there too. And Still Milk is an amazing novel of both strength and victory. Plus, what I simply love is um, and admire of the author is that she wrote it to help future generations of children who are or were sexually abused and the child system turn their back on them, you know, fail at them. And actually that book um, reached the number one best-selling spot on Amazon 24 hours after it launched. And since 2014, it continues to be a bestseller, which is amazing. That had to be amazing. And uh, who are some of your favorite authors and writers growing up? Excuse me, what was that? Who are some of your favorite authors and writers growing up? Um, well, there are actually a few of them. Um, I like Jace Patterson. Nora Roberts, Stephen King is one of my favorites. I even watch all his movies. And like I said, Kelly Randis. I like Charles Dickens mm, and yes. Oprah Winfrey. And some of the books that I like, I like Alex Cross, Zoom, I Forever Kind of Love, Silence Law, and Spill Milk, of course. Charles Dickens, Coupling Novels, and Daniel Steele and The Butler. They're all very interesting books.
And it sounds really interesting. And speaking of books, Marta, what are some of other other favorite books you enjoyed growing up? Oh my God, I don't really remember, honestly, to be honest. I mean, no, like it's just like maybe just was more TV shows, you know, like Charlie Brown, you know. Oh cartoons. yeah, my favorite. Yes, I love Charlie <laughs> Brown, especially those books, easy to read. <laughs> yes, yes, and that's what we, you know, like I said, it was, you know, go to school, come home. It was just boring, you know, and we didn't really read books. That's why I was sitting right, and you know, so that's how it went for us. From uh huh, and that sounds rather interesting as well. To be able to create your own books, and speaking of creating your own books, we'll talk about so many books like I Am Beast, Cricket Pregnancy, and also your first one, Life Growing Up, and more, along with the uh, Return of the Villains for Justice and more. But first, listen to the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at SonicWebStudios.com. Mention my Mike Widener Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout-out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia molson -Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia molson -Zia. available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews in Evil Love and Endorsed by Howard's Lovers, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at the themikewidenershow.com on over 30 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. For great books and more, Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. Check it out today. Also support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, and the Mike Widener Show.com. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Widener Show. Make sure you donate today. We're here with a terrific lady who was born in Puerto Rico, raised in New York City, and um, currently in Orlando here on the Mike Wagner Show, author Marta Nader, and um, grew up in a family in a difficult situation. We talked about that, and um, you also got some books, uh, which is called I Am Beast, Cryptic Pregnancy, Mind Cryptic um, Preg Pregnancy as well, and also Cryptic Minds, What Do You See in Me, Faultless, and more. And uh, before getting all that, um, tell us about your journey going from Puerto Rico over to uh, Orlando, where you're at right now. Um, well, okay, like, like, I was born in Puerto Rico, but when I was one years old, my parents brought me to New York. And from New York, I was there a few years, then we went to Massachusetts. And then when I was about 15 years and a half, we jumped to Florida. And then I stayed in Florida, then went to Puerto Rico, married, then came back to Florida, because I love Florida. And I want to, you know, I, I love it here. <laughs> you should write more books about Florida. You can do that, even in kids' stories, too. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. Well, of course, well, of course, you do have a couple of uh, children's books. You got Samson and Delilah, which is um, you know, good for starters. And uh, tell us about that. You seem to take Samson and Delilah to the next level. Um, it's a children's book, and um, it's about you know, it's a, it's a, about a a little girl, um, and her dog. Uh, Samson, the girl's name is Delilah, of course. And you know, it's, like I heard, um, said in the beginning of that book, it's not a, it's not a Bible story. It's just, it's, I made it into a cartoon. And it, I don't know, I just wanted to, you know, write something different. And it's, it's a really, it has a really good storyline. Mm -hmm. It's really good. And you know, it's about the safety and the animals protecting them, you know, because a lot of people grow to the animals. Oh my gosh. You know? And you know, that's what it's about. That's what the Lala does. She rescues them and she has the help of Samson. And anybody that gets in the way, that's what he's there for. So it's it's really good. 
Wow, that's a very interesting take on um, Samson and uh, Delilah as well, too, the caring for animals. And, of course, you know, you know, speaking of uh, caring as well, too, you also wrote about um, life growing up, also uh, life growing up uh, child abuse. And uh, tell us about those ones for you to write. Um, well, yeah, because um, growing up, it was really difficult because, you know, I lived through an abuse, you know, not just not just me, but my siblings too, you know, and um, it, it did affect us. I mean, me personally, I was able to, once I was in my adult years and um, I was married, it, it started to affect my marriage. So I started, um, I got some help. I went to Devil and I got some help there and uh, I was able to save my marriage, you know, and you know, I mean, that was the, the book Life Going Up. That's my side of the story. My siblings don't have, they all have their own stories to tell. I mean, I have eight brothers and three sisters. So well, I come from a large family. And they were all abused. Not wow, I was going to say, how, I was going to say, how, how do you manage to be in competition with those uh, 11 siblings? You got me in competition. Uh, no, no, not really. I mean, no, I mean, I love them all. You know, they're all good. You know, I love all my siblings. You know, maybe not the same way, but, you know, they're, they're you know, they're all abused. We grew up with that and, you know, we have that in common. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's very true as well, too. And uh, you also wrote about uh, corrective pregnancy, I am beast, and also when monsters attack and what do you see in me? And uh, corrective pregnancy is a rather interesting tale, and uh, especially about I am beast. It's not your typical horror movie, but uh, tell us about those, especially when you give it a different spin to it. Um, you're talking about the I am beast, right? Correct. Yeah, I am beast. Everybody thinks, you know, I am beast. It's a horror story, monsters and all that. But this is your version of it, which is really unique. Okay, some of my books, as you know, are, they're self-published, while, they're, while the others are um, published with Torrance Publishers. And actually, Mike, with Torrance Publishers, I have an, an ongoing series novel. Uh, the first book, um, that one is called Villains for Justice, and the second book is called The Return of the Villain for Justice, with a final third one, clearly in the works. And let me tell you a little bit about the three novels. Okay, as so I mentioned before, Mike, based on my um, life experience with child abuse, I felt inspired to write a fiction story about villains who seek justice for what they believe that are the right reason. Each character in that book shows what can happen when a citizen will build up anger, take justice, and laws into their own hands. And in the second book that follows that one, each villain returns to deal with there are struggles for social justice, such as harshest punishment, pedophiles, rapists, and so forth. Now, in the second book, I created a new uh, common villain named Amadou Khan, who fights for black lives and prejudice within the law enforcement system. And Mike, I have actually had people ask me why I named my new character villain Amadou. Well, there's a reason. And the reason... I chose that name was because of what took place back in 1999 with the wrongful death of Amadi Udalo when he was shot 41 times by four police officers. Mm. And what happened to him has always stayed with me. And I wanted to create a fictional villain who stands up for Black Lives Medicals. And based on positive reviews on that book, I've done a pretty good job writing that storyline, and I'm actually proud of it. And my final third novel, which follows these previous two, is going to be called Heroes to the Public, Villains to the Law. And that book will continue to feature the same villain characters as the other two. And that one is going to be out to the public sometime during mid to late April of 2022, next month. Wow, you've got so a good thing going there, Marta. I got to say that. And of course, when I see the thing about, um, you know, villains as well, too. And uh, what inspired you to um, call it uh, Villains for Justice instead of Heroes for Justice? Um, well, I wanted something different. I mean, I, I don't know if you're thinking about the third one, the final one. The uh, Both of them, first and the second. Well, the first one, 
I name uh, Minister Justice. I don't know. It just came to my head, and I said, "Well, this one, that name would be good." I don't. I just. I don't know. I liked the name, and then the second one, it follows it because they return. You know, so they return back to, you know, what they're gonna do, and then the third one, which is the final one, they're heroes to the public, but they're villains to the law, and. That's what the book is about, really. It's pretty good. It's going to be very interesting. The third one is going to be very, very interesting. It sounds interesting. And uh, how does this differ from the other um, crime-fighting uh, superheroes when it comes to books as well, too? It's like, how, how does that compare or make it different from uh, the rest? Um, no, I don't know. To me, I, don't, I just feel that the last one is it's the better one because there's it has the ending, you know, because how everything first started with Venice of the Justice, and then the return, and everything takes place in New York, and then the third one is kind of the ending of the novel. Mm, I I see. And uh, you talked about, um, you know, having like uh, fighting for social justice. What are some of the other social issues that, um, that, that they take on as well, too, in preserving justice? Oh, man. I mean, man, it's it's just that it's a long, long story, and they're both long. Um, like I said, they they mainly fight. They they mainly like to help the public. They're in need when they see, you know, this is wrong. What they're doing instead of justice, you know, there is no justice, and they do whatever they can to help the public and the people in need. Mm-hmm. And there's especially one named Cora Rollins. I think that a lot of people will like her. Um, they're going to have a lot of things in common with her, especially, you know, those like me and others who've been, you know, abused and sexually. And it's really good. They're going to like her. I think some will hate her, but some will like her. It is, it's really a good storyline. Now, now, who'd you say the character was? Was it Cherry or Cora? Who'd you say it was? Cora Rollins. Cora, okay. And what about uh, Nina or Nina and uh, Cherry? Maybe you can describe those characters and how they compare to Cora. Nina is the first, it's going to be the first villain. She's in the first book. She, well, she's actually in all of them. She, and she's the, she's the first villain. Then after that, uh, when Cherry is a child, she's being abused, so she gets kidnapped. And Cherry and Nina, I mean, she raises her. And later on, Sherry becomes a villain, too. And she wants to do the same thing and help. It's, it's, it goes, you know, one by one, you know. It's, it's really good. I just don't want to get the whole thing away. No, I completely, I completely understand that one. And what do you want the readers to uh, get out of these novels? Um, well, I want them to understand where I'm coming from. You know, because I know a lot of people that aren't going to like it, you know, I mean, but I wrote it because, you know, I I want to be an advocate for the abused children. You know, and that's that's why, you know, I write, you know, and, and you know, like, for example, one of the, the things that inspired me, um, it has been that, my own desire to help abuse children, you know, but not only them, like, also their parents as well. And what I mean by that is that I was an abused child all the way into my teen years, so I personally know how that feels, and I know what it takes from a child, and I especially know the emotional and physical pain it brings at least on a child. And like I said, um, based on my own life experience with child abuse, and not having the help of child protective services has been one of the things that has inspired me to advocate to, you know, by writing about the things that go on behind closed doors. And this is why most of my writing and published books are about abused children who have no voice and have to suffer in silence because they haven't been given a chance to be heard yet. And many people don't know or understand the rough challenges these children are faced with, even well into their out of years, like I was one of those. And it's from there where my inspiration to write it mainly comes from there. Mm-hmm. And how can uh-huh. And how can we help? Um 
you know, it would be a great idea, you know, when if anybody sees children that are being abused, don't stay quiet. I think they should report it immediately. You know, I mean, keep an eye. You know, I mean, it. you know, it's good to, you know, just keep an eye and get updated with the child abuse guidelines and all that. You know, like I did it. It helps, you know. Mm hmm. And we certainly will do so. And where can we find all your books at, uh, Marta? Oh, man, mostly Amazon. They're in Goodreads, Barnes and Nobles. Um, they're in a lot of places. <laughs> they're in a lot. And how about your website? What's your website? Oh, my website is MissMarta.com. MissMarta.com. And certainly check it out. There's a lot of games, a lot of things to do all about Marta. And uh, we'll talk about what's coming up for Marta and more in just one minute. You listen to The Mike Widener Show at TheMikeWidenerShow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor, The Mike Widener Show, international warring author, Mia Molson Z of Missing, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. We'll be back with the multi talented Marta Nader of The Return of the Villains for Justice. After this timeout, the Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1 800 303 3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next. Level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host and I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written. It's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm going to highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia. He is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing. Available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers, and boy, are you in luck. Right place, right time. Tuned in to The Mike Wagner Show. You heard me. We're back with the multi-talented author Marta Nader out of Orlando, Florida with Villains for Justice and the return of the Villains for Justice and her third book coming up here on the Mike Wagner Show along with many other books like I Am Beast, Cryptic Pregnancy, Samson, Delilah, and more. And um, just a few more minutes here, Marty. You've been amazing. You told us a great story. Uh, what else can you expect from you in 2022 and beyond, Marta? Uh, well, like I said, in 2022, it's going to, my last novel comes out. Then I'm going to take a break from writing because I feel like I deserve it. I need it. You know, because when you write, oh my God, it takes so much out of you. You know, I love it because it takes me into another world, you know, fictional world. And it keeps my mind busy, you know, and, but in 2022, there's going to be that book, which will be out next next month sometime we're certainly looking forward to it and you've been really busy which is great marta and who do you consider biggest influence in your career um well like oh well my husband he you know he influenced me he tells me to keep going don't give up my children also even though they're adults and um you know uh mike there's something that i wanted to bring up okay that had influenced me even more. And it was what happened to a hero, Gabriel Fernandez, up in California. Now, I wanted to bring this up because I feel this is not just important, but it serves as another example of what I'm talking about when I write these fictional books. Um, this was a boy in California who was abused day in and out by his own mother and her boyfriend back in 2000. 13. Wow. And the saddest, yeah, the saddest part to me was that the boy was tortured to death while you're in the watch, the watch of child protective services. And I didn't watch the Netflix documentary because Mike, I can't watch things like that because it breaks me emotionally and I, I won't be able to sleep. 
I can't watch like movies, anything that has to be with, do with abused children. I cannot watch. And Gabriel's story is really heartbreaking. And both his death and lack of help with child protective services influenced me to write um, my first novel to which I dedicated that book to him. Mm, yes. Because of what happened to him. Mm-hmm. And that's a very good thing to do. Just keep getting the word out and keep plugging away. And what's the and and lastly, what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point, Marta? My best advice is to never give up on your dreams. Believe in yourself. Believe you can do it. And Mike, since my childhood, my dream was to become an author someday. And I made that dream come true. So let no one, no obstacles, no criticism, no negative negativity stand in your way. Reach your goal. It's possible. And as long as it's what you really want, then go for it. You can do it. And you're certainly doing a great job, Marta. I got to say that you're doing a great job. We're here with uh, author Marta Nader of Villains for Justice and the Return of the Villains for Justice and the third book coming up on the Mike Wagner Show. Marta, very big thank you for your time. You've been totally amazing. Looking forward to having you in soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. We'd love to have you back in 2022 and beyond. And once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact you? Where can people purchase or check out your books? Well, if they go to my site, my main site is MissMartaYahoo.com. And if they're interested in purchasing my books, they all they have to do is go to Amazon or Dor- Doran's publisher's site, and they'll find my books there. And we will certainly do so. Once again, Marta, very big thank you for your time. You've been totally fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. We'd love to have you back. And we're looking forward to having you again soon. We wish you all the best. And you've definitely got a great future ahead of you. Thank you, Mike. And it's been an honor. Thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate this opportunity you've given me. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your product. Project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written. It's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm going to highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia. He is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamoshenzea.com. Missing. Available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show. 